Welcome to the studio at That Nerd Show. I'm Marcus Blake, and we are doing another virtual uh, interview from the Naples Film Festival. We are speaking with director Olympia Stone over a documentary about the famed artist Richard Estes. Uh, Olympia, welcome. How are you? How are you? I'm good, thank you, and um, you know, really happy to be here. So, hope I can answer some questions. We'll see. <laughs> well, uh, first of all, I want to compliment you. I love the title. Uh, actually, iconic Richard Estes. Uh, fantastic title. Thank uh, you. I. Uh, Doing a film about Richard Estes, because there hasn't really been much about him. I mean, if you're in the art world, of course, you know who he is. But uh, how did this come about? I mean, how did you get to do something like this with him? Well, I, um, so this is my sixth film. I, I sort of specialize in documentaries about artists. And my background is that my father was an art dealer and had a gallery in New York for over 50 years. And Richard was one of his artists. And so I grew up knowing Richard from the time I was like, I don't know, five, <laughs> younger maybe. Five. Um, and, you know, having dinners with him. And, you know, so we were not super, super close, but I definitely consider Richard like an old family friend and and because Richard is such a private person it made the approach of it made him more accessible to me as a subject right he's and and so I think it just made that happen in a way that maybe wouldn't have um if I hadn't known him right uh, well uh it, lucky <laughs> that's all I, I can know say. um <laughs> So it's interesting. I'm originally from Chicago and, you know, going to the Art Institute all the time. Um, of course, you know who Richard Estes is. Um, but uh, nobody has actually really, this is a very intimate portrayal of, of, you know, going into his life and stuff. Um, what for you personally, because I think you have a unique perspective. I mean, what do you think stands out mostly about, I mean, that's iconic about him? What do I think is iconic about him? Yeah, what do you personally think is, because I think you have well, a different perspective than everybody else. Yeah, I mean, I would say, of course I'm totally biased, so I'm not going to pretend <laughs> that I'm not, but I do consider Richard one of the very best photorealists out there. I think he really, um, I mean, I hesitate to say invented, but um, pushed forward the use and really um, just so masterfully, for example, of reflections, the way that he sort of um, documented New York, especially in the early part of his career. Um, and, and what I love about Richard's paintings is he's not choosing, I mean, in some cases, yes, he's made many paintings, for example, of the Brooklyn Bridge, you know, um, and you consider that that is an iconic place. Right. Um, as is the Guggenheim, but those are really the exceptions. I mean, as he says in the film, he sort of goes after these almost boring places that nobody even thinks to look at necessarily. And he's almost drawn to that and drawn to make beauty out of something that isn't even necessarily aesthetically pleasing. <laughs> I think that his subject matter is sort of the iconic in, in the sense that nobody had, I mean, I don't know. I, you always get into trouble. I'm going to second guess myself. Of course, painters have painted pedestrian things before, but I just feel like Richard sort of went after it in a totally different way and definitely pushed the limits of reflection and perspective in a way that hadn't been done before. Well, I think it was Aristotle who said that, you know, art is the imitation of reality. And it is kind of those mundane things that are the most realistic. So, right. you know, hence they are, you know, truly the most artistic. 
Right. Uh, I, uh, I, my, I kind of have a funny little anecdote. I mean, my first introduction to him really in understanding, um, him was an art class in college and, you know, that's a, and I, you know, remember making the comment, like, that's a really great photo. And, you know, the professor, no, no, that's a painting. And you're just looking at it like, <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> you know, so you finally yeah. get to understand, you know, that medium when it comes to art. Um, so it, why now? I mean, why does, why did Richard Estes decide to do, to let people into his world now? Well, Richard is, um, I mean, Richard's 88 years old now. And I, for me as a filmmaker, I felt like here is an artist who's extraordinary, who frankly has not received his due and his share of adulation and respect, I don't think, from the sort of larger art world that exists out there. The fact that he was 83 before he got his first retrospective in New York City still right. makes me feel yeah. crazy. It's like, what What about the Whitney? Why isn't he being shown at the MoMA? You know, it's like, anyway, so that's frustrating to me. Um, why now also, I think Richard is in a really good place in his life. I think he's you know, he's still painting actively, but maybe he's slowed down a little bit um, and maybe he's a little bit more, has more time to reflect also because, um, you know, he's, he doesn't quite travel as much as he used to and he's a big traveler. So I think that his life was quite busy, um, you know, and, and also Richard is never one to toot his own horn. And so if I hadn't really, <laughs> encouraged him strongly to make the film several times I, he wouldn't you know he's just not he's he's humble he's not wow. really into the whole concept of his legacy and all this other kind of grandiose thinking about you know his career i think he just wants to make the work and i so, think that's an inter inter interesting perspective from any artist no matter what you're doing whether it's painting writing film or whatever it's it's kind of up to other people to determine your legacy. Right. side um so i got two questions left for you uh what out of all of his work what is it what's the one thing that speaks to you more than anything else what the what's the one painting that does it for you that is such a terrible question i'm mad at you for asking it <laughs> but i would say um you know I think some of his Venice paintings are really, I mean, there's so many paintings that I love, so it, this is really painful. I love also some of the early New York paintings, um, like there's one that has the planner's peanut man, it, um, just like a, a reflected storefront, because it really feels nostalgic for me, having grown, in, grown up in New York relative, you know, around that time. It's how the city used to look and right. it doesn't really anymore. So the, the paintings from that era that show just, you know, Columbus Avenue or one of these, the bridal shop, there's a bridal shop painting that has reflections of, you know, it's the signage. Um, those are sort of the ones that I think I, I enjoy the most, but it's really sentimental for me, you know? Right. And I think that's kind of very unique, you know, when it comes to him in photorealism, because he's capturing things that, aren't around anymore. So that is, that's our picture into history in the form right. of people. So, right. uh, so one of the things that we love to do uh, for any filmmaker or anybody, you know, that we interview is we have a very nerdy question. That's, we just kind of, <laughs> we just kind of test your inner nerd. 
If you could have a superpower or a weapon of choice from within the nerd universe to fight the forces of evil, what would you choose personally? I oh got another really hard question. Um, <laughs> yeah, I know. Everybody's always prepared to talk about their film, but then we ask that question. I wasn't prepared. <laughs> You're making me think. I don't, you know, Mike, Mike, I've talked about this with my kids. I would say it would have to be something like, um, I, I have said the invisibility before, but then there's been a long discussion about how that's a bad one. So I, now I'm second guessing invisibility and I'm going to say like superhuman strength. <laughs> I don't know. Well, you can um, always have two. I mean, okay, well then maybe I'd go for those. Maybe I'd go for those two then. There's something those, about invisibility that I think is kind of cool, but. I also think those are two great powers if you're a mom. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Exactly. Come in handy. <laughs> exactly. Well, thank you for speaking with us. Uh, it was a, a great film uh, about, you oh, know, as you. you said, an artist that most people probably don't know enough about. Um, and whether he cares about legacy or not, uh, this is a great film about his legacy. So thank you for doing it. Uh, no, for those well, thank you. Fans.